Netherlands today are marking Unity Day, that historic moment 26 years ago when East and West Germany forged a united future after the divisions of the Cold War. But it's more a bitter than a sweet celebration, as Europe seems to be struggling to keep unity and its values alive. Over the weekend, voters in Hungary overwhelmingly rejected a German-backed plan to divide refugees among EU nations. More than 90% of those who cast their ballots supported the government's no position. But turnout was below the 50% threshold needed to make Sunday's referendum legally binding. The country's hardline prime minister says that Hungarian voters have sent a clear message to Brussels. Brussel is. Brussels will have to make an important decision. Now it is their turn to make an important decision. The EU is a democratic community. Today, in one of the member states, 92% of those taking part in the referendum have stated that they did not agree with the intention of Brussels. So, what does that mean indeed? Let us discuss this with the Hungarian government spokesman Zoltan Kovacs and also joining us Eleni Kunakalis, the former U.S. ambassador to Hungary. Uh, welcome both of you to the show. Um, can I go straight to you first, Mr. Kovacs, because just in the last few moments, your country's official uh, entity has invalidated this referendum because of the low turnout. So what does happen next? Uh, you're right. Uh, legally, according to the new rules we have introduced a couple of years ago, uh, it is not compulsory for Hungarian parliament to make a decision on what the Hungarian people have decided about uh, uh, yesterday. But keep in mind uh, that that insurance was put into our legal system to ensure that if someone goes against, say, parliamentary majority or against the government, it would still be perfectly possible or rather mandatory for the parliament to make a ruling on the decision. But this time it was the Hungarian government who made the decision to go for a referendum. And very obviously, 3.3 million people who went for the no vote, that is a 98% majority, cannot be disregarded. And we believe it not only politically, but also legally is binding for the government. But what does that mean? I mean, you say politically it can't be ignored. What does that mean? Are you still going to refuse uh, the, the migrant quotas, which is what all this was all about? Well, the vote was about uh, the possibility that uh, uh, European institutions go around the Hungarian parliament and make decisions about whom shall we live together in this country uh, without us. And we deny that. We believe that that kind of um, uh, element of our sovereignty, those competences have never been handed over to any European institution. Keep in mind that back in 2014, these questions, illegal migration, mass migration on an intercontinental level, was not at all on the agenda. Uh, so uh, we needed a reinforcement, if you like, a new mandate, a reinforced mandate. Also keep in mind that uh, the government uh, started to uh, run this country again in 2014, uh, in the, uh, the second consecutive term, with 2.2 million votes behind. Mm -hmm. And this time, 3.3 million votes go for a particular issue, giving a reinforced mandate for the Hungarian government to represent it, not only domestically, but also uh, on the European uh, and the, at the European institutional level. Well, let me, let me turn to Ambassador Kunukalis, because, you know, obviously the United States and many in Western Europe look at Hungary and see a nation that was very liberally democratic is now, in the words of Mr. Orban, an illiberal democracy. And you had a front row seat in what you call the sort of disintegration of, of, of the kind of democracy that you'd like to see there. What, in your view, Ambassador, is going on? What is Mr. Orban after? Well, I think you have to start, Christiane, by looking at the fact that this was a 98% to one vote. Votes like that do not happen in pluralistic societies. This was a very controversial issue, and to see a result like that, and for the government to declare victory, there's an absurdity here. Even Tito, back in 1945, didn't get more than 90% of the vote. So what's going on? And what's going on is that those who were opposed to the government's position encouraged people to reject and boycott the referendum by not voting. And 60% of people either cast invalid uh, uh, ballots by defacing them or didn't show up at all. So we really have to look at what actually happened yesterday, which is that the majority of Hungarians either didn't vote 
or deface their ballots, and this was a clear rejection of the government's position. I mean, you, you've just heard that, Mr. Kovacs. I will come to you in a second. But I still want to ask you, Ambassador, because this is the accusation that has been thrown at the Orban government, that they want to, quote unquote, take back control, bring power back to the national government, say no to Brussels on most issues. Uh, and, and this is obviously a step in that direction. Is that right? Well, I think that what's clear here is you don't hear Hungari the Hungarian co government calling for a huxet or heck, right, the leaving of the EU. What they're looking to do is influence the direction of the EU on the immigration issue. So I think that that's a significant point. And I think it's also based on the fact that most Hungarians don't want to leave the EU. Most Hungarians really see Europe as their as their home. And in fact, if you look at the real immigration issue with Hungary, is how many Hungarians have relocated elsewhere within the EU since uh, they had the ability through the open mm -hmm. market to uh, the open, the common market to be able to live elsewhere. So I think that is really the difference that you're looking at is that he's not saying we're going to leave the EU. He's saying he wants to heavily influence a major issue that is. Um, that that the EU is dealing with right now. Can I go back to you then, Mr. Kovac? Um, look, you know, your, your government has been in trouble. I mean, the things that your prime minister has been saying has got many, many people infuriated. For instance, Luxembourg's foreign minister recently said that Hungary should be expelled from the EU for treating asylum seekers, quote, worse than wild animals. And your prime minister has said that every single migrant poses a public security and a terror risk. Um, how, you know, how can he say that when the facts clearly do not bear that out? Well, with all due respect, uh, Christian, and with all due respect, uh, Madam Ambassador, you have to be very careful when using so heavy words you've used before, I mean, just recently. Uh, those accusations on behalf of the Hungarian opposition or uh, Western European leftist politicians have been with us, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm aware of the uh, sometimes political inclinations of CNN's coverage of what is happening underground. I don't think there is a place for giving us lessons on democracy here, especially in the case of a referendum. The referendum is the most democratic form of reaching out to the Hungarians. We've asked about their opinion on a particular issue, and they cl uh, said a clear no to measures that's been yeah, planning, but the thing is, it's invalidated actually, uh, by European institutions. Honestly, we're just trying to ask you questions. Yes, but, I'm but just again, trying to ask him, you a question. Keep... So my question to you is, how do you react to a fellow EU foreign minister saying that because of the treatment of your government to these refugees, and Mr. Kovac, we all watched the video over the summer, the Hungarian journalist tripping over, you know, a refugee. I mean, it, look, you've got to admit it, it hasn't been good PR for your yep. country, right? And let me just play your own I prime minister. You, I, yeah, go ahead. What? I believe you would like to hear my opinion. Yes, go on ahead. I'm thing. trying to get you so to let answer. So let, mm. let me. Let me tell you that we don't deal with disrespectful remarks on the country because we've heard so many for the past six years. We've been called Nazis and whatsoever. We have also seen uh, our Damon reporting from here last year, uh, including lots of lies about this country, which uh, did much damage to this country. I'm so going to have to stop very, you there. Very difficult to repair. I'm but, very uh, sorry, but, but let, she let doesn't lie, and so we are honest we reject, reporters. We reject. We reject all these accusations, and what we would like to restore is law and order at the borders of the European Union. How can you expect a country in Europe behave that wouldn't be possible in the United States? How it would be possible, actually, that illegal migrant, migrants in hundreds of thousands and millions enter the European Union? We are trying to fulfill our duties, and uh, you cannot point your finger on Hungary because Hungary is fulfilling the treaties and is trying to follow international law. Well, I, I will get back to you with, with something that your own prime minister has recently said, but let me actually ask you, Ambassador, then. Obviously, the migrant crisis has destabilized lots of Europe, a lot of Europe, even Germany, which had the initial open welcome mat. You know, you know even Hungarian uh, officials say, and oppositions, that the EU is very slow. The 2008 crash, the euro crisis, the refugee crisis. People are feeling that the EU is not doing enough and quickly enough, and they're feeling that. Sure. Well, let's be clear. This is the most significant immigration crisis since the Second World War. And so the question is, how will the European Union, the partners in this great union, work together to address the problem? It is not helpful 
for the leader of Hungary to run an initiative. The slogan is keep them out and and say essentially that they're not even willing to accept what would amount to about 1,300 uh, uh, migrants, Syrian migrants coming into Hungary um, because they're taking such a hard line. What, what I think would be a much better approach for Hungary that is so invested in its membership in the EU um, from, from its cohesion funds to the open market to the ability for people to live anywhere within the EU. It, it is so beneficial to the Hungarians that their leadership should be right at the table, not looking of how to um, take a hardline position, but looking at how it can play a role in working together to address what is a very, very difficult crisis. In, indeed it is. Mr. Kovács, lastly to you, I, I still need to understand where your government is taking this in the long run. So let me play this uh, soundbite from your own prime minister not too long ago, a couple of days ago, in fact, September 28th, about European values and how Hungary is reacting to this situation. We lose our European values and identity the way frogs are cooked in slowly heating water. Quite simply, slowly there will be more and more Muslims and we will no longer recognize Europe. Okay, so that's the bottom line. You don't want more Muslims in. So what is the future going to be? What, what is your big picture, Mr. Kovac? Well, uh, the Hungarian government was outspoken on that several times. Uh, uh, first time a year ago, back in September, we have made a five-point proposal. Already we have reinforced it with the Schengen 2.0 proposal in the spring. And uh, as the soundbite was coming, it, uh, in Warsaw, the prime minister and also the V4 has made it clear what kind of Europe we uh, believe in. And that is a strong Europe through a strong member states. And also a strong Europe which is uh, maintaining, retaining its own very own values on which it was based back by the founding fathers in the 50s and 60s. Uh, Europe carries values uh, which uh, is based on Christianity in its uh, uh, general uh, meaning that is on the Greek or Roman and the Judeo-Christian uh, values we all share. Uh, what's happening in Europe today is endangering those fun uh, fundamentals, those foundations and we believe we, we should step up against it. Uh Zoltan Kovac, thank you very much. And, and how would you address, Eleni, very, very briefly and very quickly, the fear around a lot of Europe that fundamental European values are under siege? In a time of crisis, you don't need people taking extreme views, pointing fingers and inciting fear. Europe has seen that story before and it did not turn out well. What you need is through the context of this great organization, which is the European, Commun European Union, for member states to come together to address the issues together in a positive way that speaks to the best of the Hungarians and the best of the Europeans and not the lowest of well, them. Well, we, we thank you both very, very much, Ambassador Kunalakis and Zoltan Kovac. Thank you. thank you very much for being with us tonight.